Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'll be showing you how to paint an octopus. We'll be uh, doing it fairly simple style, I hope, uh, keeping it easier for the beginners. Um, I've got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. He's man in chat for our live show, so if you've got questions, you can post those in all caps and we'll try to answer them while I paint. I'll be showing you step by step how to do it all the way from drawing to finish. Let's get started. All right, so here's my reference photo. I went ahead and sketched out because I wanted to move the legs around a little bit. Um, so I sketched him out on my uh, paper here. So I think we're going to kind of try to use up more of the canvas here, make them a little bit bigger. Um, so I'm going to set that aside. I started with my canvas. I gave it a coat of cobalt teal. So if you've got teal, uh, it's just cobalt or phthalo blue, phthalo green and white mixed together. And this is a nine by 12 inch Belgian linen Frederick's canvas. Um, they have provided our canvases for the show, so thank you to them. They're kind of a low tack, low low textured uh, canvas. They've got a really nice, just a little bit of a grip, but they're not too uh, too textured. All right, let me go over my brushes really quick with you. I've got a number twelve bright, a number eight filbert, a number two flat, and a number one round in the sixty one hundred series in Princeton. These are all Princeton brushes. Then I've got a Deerfoot Stippler 3 8 inch and a number six filbert, number two bristle fan. And these are my two angle brushes, the 3 8 inch and quarter inch. These are the Velvet Touch and these are the Select brushes. And all of the brushes and materials that I'm using will be down in the description if you want to find out where to buy them. And um, they're a sponsor too. And yes, thank you to Princeton for, our, yes, they are our brush sponsor. So. Uh, they don't pay me, but I use their products, so anyhow. All right. <laughs> and I've also got a sea sponge that we'll be using. That's also down in the description. Uh, really, any kind of sponge will, will do. And thanks to the sea sponge community for sponsoring. <laughs> they did not sponsor anything. Oh, they didn't? No. Okay. No. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so... I painted this uh, this color to begin with just to save us a step. So you want to paint it and let it dry completely. And then we're going to do some washes over the top of it with these other colors. But I, um, I needed can, this down first. We're going to go so. over the paints. Yes, let's go over our paints real quick. Titanium white, uh, burnt sienna, quinacridone magenta, cadmium red medium, cadmium red light, cadmium orange, yellow oxide, cadmium yellow medium, phthalo green, yellow shade, phthalo blue green shade. There's the cobalt teal. This one's called uh, turquoise deep or, or phthalo turquoise. Ultramarine blue, doxazine purple. This is ultramarine blue plus white. It's called light ultramarine. And this is burnt umber. If you don't have all these colors, that's fine. Just use what you've got. Um, you're just going to want kind of a warm red and a, and a more purpley red. And then uh, just a few blues to work with. But I'm, you know, I'm just putting them out. Most of these can be mixed with ultramarine and phthalo blue um, and phthalo green. So those are the only three that you've got. You can mix the rest of these blues and things with those. All right. So I'm going to dip my sponge in the water and squeeze it out so there's really not a whole lot of water in and then I'm going to dip in and just get a little bit extra water in there and put it out on my palette here. Dab it off and then I'm going to grab some of the, let's go ahead and start with the ultramarine blue. I'm going to dip that into that water to kind of thin it out. I'm just going to run it on here really quickly and really you don't need a sea sponge for this if you don't you can use a regular sponge or just whatever you happen to have. I'm just going to do that. So that was the phthalo blue underneath. And then I'm going to do the turquoise here. And these are liquid form, so they're a little bit thinner. And then what I'm going to do is lay down. This is just the plastic from the canvas package. So I'm just going to lay that down. See if I can catch it before it dries. 
And you want to get it all over your canvas and just smoosh it around. And what it does is create these kind of little lines and things in your paint. Oops, don't get your fingerprints in there. I got my fingers on there. Oops, there we go. So now you can see what it's done. Oh, so now I'm going to start selling some scrap plastic. <laughs> what, about $5, $10 let's a bag? I can get that. Okay, let's get a little bit more paint over here. Okay, then I'm just going to go through in the corners and kind of darken up the corners with whatever's left on my sea sponge here. And then I can, if I've got any areas where, you know, there's like not enough going on, I can kind of dab in there. But that's kind of the look we're going for. It's kind of got that, I don't know, seafloor look maybe, I thought, with the lines and everything. You know, it's got this kind of geometric looking shape sometimes. All right, good enough. Now I want to splatter. Yes. Got to splatter. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Grab my fan brush, and I'm gonna go ahead and grab some of more of that phthalo turquoise, I think. Add lots of water to it. Got real quiet all of a sudden with the fan, <laughs> when the fan went off. I know. It's like, whoa, oh, this is dramatic. Okay. The sure. dramatic silence. Everybody's Drum roll, on please. the edge of their seats right now. <laughs> splatters. Splatters. Yay, splatters. So I'm just holding my brush really firmly with this hand and tapping, tapping. And the more water I have, the bigger the splatters will be. So the, the more... I scoop up on my brush, I can get some bigger splatters. If you make a mistake or you get a splatter that you don't like, you can just kind of use your sponge and just dab it off. If you get them too big or want to move them around, you can even uh, touch them with your with a paper towel, with a wet paper towel to get off the extra. Get some more in here. Okay, I think that's good. You think or you know? I mean, come on, you're the professional. No, do we need more? I think we're good. It doesn't seem dark enough up here, so I'm probably going to let this dry, and then I'll probably get a little bit darker up there. But I want to let these dry just a little bit, and then I want to dab them off so that it leaves a little halo. But I may have to let it dry just a little bit more. Let's see. I'll try it on one of these. Yeah, there we go. Mm. Yeah, I don't want to mess with it too soon. You got to let the outer rim kind of dry first, and then I'm going to blot it, and it'll leave like a white circle in the middle, but the outer, outer area will be will be uh, dark. Okay, we're just going to wait for a minute here. Okay, shh, everybody. <laughs> Let's watch the paint Just dry. watch the paint dry. <laughs> <laughs> and well, I could actually do water drops too. Let's do a few just regular, regular water drops because this background paint isn't fully dry yet. So what that will do is leave kind of white dots. It'll leave that background color showing. So we can do that in a few spots too. Just water. Oh. Let it kind of set. Over You're just looking for excuses to splatter now. I know. I know. Well, that may have been too dry already. May not have done it soon enough. Oh. Yeah, they were too dry. All right, we'll start again. That's okay. Well, I got it there. Those were not quite dry. You kind of kind of catch it while the background's still in the midst of drying. Okay, so let's see. Oh, there we go. 
You can kind of see what I'm talking about here where you can still see the splatters. There's just a little halo of dark around the outside. It looks like bubbles. But you gotta wait just long enough for the outside to, to just set and dry a little bit. Okay, there we go. I think that's good. You can see that? Oh, yeah. Okay, that's I'm gonna let you take cool. that, hun. All right, and I'll see you later. <laughs> Thank you. Now let's find our little stick man guy here. There's our little mascot. It's funny, the, the uh, you know how YouTube does like the little video previews sometimes in their, um, for the thumbnail. Uh, stick man almost always is what mine show. <laughs> For some reason, the timing, they, they time it, you know, it's probably like 15 minutes in and they do like a little clip of, you know, whatever is playing on the video. And it's almost always Stickman on mine. It's just really funny. So anybody watching probably like, what is she doing? <laughs> All right, let's give him a, let's give him an octopus here. Oh, Stickman is Mark's creation and we just kind of have for fun add to something to him while we're blow drying so that we have a filler but I do want to say thank you to uh, everybody watching today we really appreciate you joining us it's really fun for us getting to do these with you guys all right there we go <laughs> it looks really bad <laughs> He's not supposed to be beautiful. There we go. He's got a he's got a weird octopus there at his feet. Coming in from the wave. He's getting into the boat. All right, there we go. So there's our background. Kind of fun. Let me just wipe this off my palette so I've got this area to work with again. All right, so let's draw our octopus in. Let me put... Oh, did I bump it? Must have bumped it. Wonder when I did that. All right, so I'm gonna put his face kind of right in the middle here. So, and I kind of wanna be about that big. So I'm gonna do the top of the eye first. There's just kind of a circle for this eye. And then there's a straight line and then a bump on this side. To start the head and then there's kind of a straight line down from the middle of this eye or kind of right from the inside curve of that eye straight line down and then it curves around and does kind of a straight line down and does kind of a almost like a box shape but it's rounded just a little bit so this kind of part flat and then it kind of curves around like this and this so there's our a basic shape for our octopus body and then we'll start putting in the legs this is really fun because these legs can pretty much go wherever we want them to so we're just going to kind of curve them around and fill in our empty spaces i'll start this one right here by this eye and come up and around this one's going to go kind of behind and then this part's going to come up and over show the tentacles and curve under like that okay so there's our first leg or are they legs tentacles right i think they're tentacles tentacles okay here's our first tentacle we'll do a curly key for this one round this part's going to come up and over I'm just using regular school chalk here to uh, draw this in. You can use something water soluble, so pastel pencil or um, water soluble crayon even, or a um, watercolor pencil, just whatever you've got that uh, will dissolve when we put paint on it, 
on it. You don't want a regular lead pencil because it, it will show up underneath your octopus. You don't want that. I'll make this a little bit bigger. All right, so about right down from the head here, I'm going to start these legs and I'm going to kind of bring them down and then curve them back up into this empty space here. Do a curly cue around like that. So you do the first line, and then what you do is just put your second line kind of parallel to it, and then taper it as you get down towards the end. So they're really easy to draw. Do the little tentacles on that side, and then there's going to be another one coming in here and curving up and over. Well, maybe Caroline. they're called maybe they're called arms. Arms, okay. They have eight of them. Eight arms, mm -hmm. okay. I did know that. It's a good thing because they're called octopuses. I mean, it would be <laughs> odd if they had seven, true, or, or five. <laughs> be very confusing. That would be. Thank you for that helpful. You're welcome. Commentary there. Huh? I mean, at least they're not named after their three hearts. Ooh, three hearts. I did not know. I don't think I knew that. Maybe I did. I probably heard it and forgot it. Replaced by some useless information. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So there we go. Yeah, I think it's good. And then we're going to curve this up and around here. Nice curve right there. And then this leg is going to come down and back up and around right here. Big round curve and then back this way. And then let's do this one. So this is going to come down from the eye and back up this way. Curve into this corner. And we're going to do a fold right there. is going to curve here. So we've got one, two, three, four on that side. One, two, three, four on this side. Okay, so we're good. So we'll curve this one. Let's do this one. It's kind of straight out and back in. Like that. And their legs are pretty flexible, so they're pretty bendy. So you can pretty much, as long as you're not doing a right angle on them, you pretty much can do just about anything you want with these wavy lines here. They're pretty fun. Fun to draw, easy, stress-free, just kind of let your imagination go and draw these little guys in. If you don't want to draw them, I have traceables available, so you can have a, after the show, I, I take a drawing of what I've done here off of my finished painting, and I post it on my Patreon page, so you can purchase those for a dollar a month. All of my traceables are available. Unlimited downloads for a dollar. I'm going to move. I want to fit in a curve right there, so I'm going to move this leg down so that I don't hit it when I do that curve. So I'm going to move it down just a little bit. So let's do this one in first. Like that. And then we'll put this leg in down lower right here so that it kind of does a longer curve out. Maybe 
maybe not that close to the edge. You want to make sure your background's dry before you do this part so that you don't accidentally draw if you, you know, erase. You saw what happened with the water drops that you put over the wet paint. It'll lift off your paint, so just make sure that that's dry before you do this. Let me make this a little bit smaller curve, and then we'll be all set. There we go. Fit it right in there. Just wanted to give a little space between those two. All right, I like it. What do you think, hun? What? No, it's just it's fun watching where chat goes. So Mona told a, told a joke. Uh huh. It was a uh, what do you call two identical octopuses? What? Identical. And then it was corrected to be octopi. Oh gosh! For for the for the plural, which right. is true. Right. Yeah. And then I said that that's my least favorite pie. <laughs> and now we're talking about cherry and rhubarb pies. Okay. <laughs> Good to know. So if you're missing out in chat, subscribe to Angela's channel. Jump into <laughs> chat, and you can you can, can you can tell us what your favorite pie is. Oh, this is awesome. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm gonna do right. I'm gonna do that. I do miss getting to chat with everybody. It's part of the fun of the live shows for sure. All right, I am gonna mix my quinacridone with my cadmium red medium. It'll make kind of a deep cherry red. I'm going to start slapping that on this guy right here in the face. Or his, not this face, what is this, his body? This is his head, right? Is this his brain? Or is that his stomach? Or his three hearts? I have no idea. I'll have to look it up. <laughs> okay. It's probably his body, right? Hashtag octopus facts. <laughs> Everybody will be able to teach a class on it after this. There you go. <laughs> All right. I'm just putting down my first coat here. I'm going to get some purple to do in this little dark area right here. Looks like that's where they keep their hearts. Okay. I do know that they can... They can pretty much collapse their bodies into like flat, you know, like they're, they're pretty flexible. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put some dark around this shadow, this guy here and shadow down some of these legs a little bit. This is purple. It's also called a mantle. Mantle. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Okay. I'll grab some ultramarine blue here. Use some of that. I'm going to do him kind of multicolored. He's not going to be the red, just the red. I want to do blue and all kinds of colors on him. So we're going to be very creative with our color scheme today. So these back ones, let's do some, do some of this red. You can see how that, the teal underneath uh, is changing the color of the red over the top of it. It's really interesting. You're seeing a little bit of that, the color through it. So kind of a nice contrast there. Super chat. Um, do some purple right here. Super chat from Sandy. Well, the full name is Sandy Jane Holt. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you so much. No specific message, so I'm going to say that she's enjoying the facts. She, she likes the octopus facts. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
whether oh, they're real or not. Purple there. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sandy. <laughs> She's probably just an octopus fan here. I'm going to put some of this light purple down here to kind of... This is that light ultramarine blue, and I'm just tapping it in. They kind of have a knobby texture, or the, you know, I think they can they can adapt their skin tone, skin texture too, right? They can go smooth, or they can they can kind of raise it up and stuff to camouflage themselves. I think so. Yeah, they can change colors. They can change <coughs> colors. They, they blend can... into their backgrounds. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It's pretty pretty cool. So we're gonna kind of give them a little bit of lighter colored spots there just so that you can see the body from the from the arms okay let's keep going here this is fun all right what do we want to do next let's do let's do some of this brighter red on the tentacle side so i'm going to add some of the cadmium red light up here do it down here I'm just using this brush on its edge. It's going to give me nice straight lines. And I can hold a little bit more paint that way too. Maybe add a little bit more of the cadmium red to that so it's not just so different from the color before it. And then we'll, we'll save the little bit here and we're going to switch brushes. We'll get our smaller brush here. This is the number one round and we'll use that for this little curly bit at the end. It'll be easier to do it with the little round brush. Okay. And then while I've got this I'm going to go ahead and just put streak some of this red on this side of the leg arm. Just a little bit of it. Another super chat. Mm -hmm. This one's from Linda. Uh, no message, so I think she doesn't like octopi either. <laughs> but I do. She doesn't like them? I, I would like eight pies, just not an octopi. I don't even know what you mean by that. I don't need to know, I guess. <laughs> well, not, don't there's, ask. there's blueberry pie. Right. There's cherry pie. Right. And octopi, but that would be gross. True. True. <laughs> okay, Marky. I'll worry about you sometimes. <laughs> Another super chat. This one's from mm -hmm. Sandy again. This time has a message. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> she has to do it again just so she can message us. <laughs> Sorry, Sandy. <laughs> and she said, okay, so just figured out how to attach my message to the super chat. <laughs> just saying, saying thanks for amazing talents. Love Aww. both of you. Well, thank, thank you, you, Sandy. That's awesome. And that is great. <laughs> You could have just put that in the chat and I would have read it out. You didn't have to pay extra for that, but thanks. <laughs> so sweet. All right, so that one was quinacridone magenta on that. They're really turning kind of purple anyways. Even that red is turning kind of purple because of that blue underneath is mixing with the blue colors. We can add a little bit of white to that. And then let's dab some of the pink on top of this guy. You're going to have some highlights. This is the quinacridone magenta. Uh-oh. And white. Okay, so we got two more from Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> was she trying to figure it out? And she <laughs> says, you're welcome, you're welcome. <laughs> oh, Amy here. <laughs> One from Steffi. Stiffy Cakes it says, Octopus, you make all my painting dreams come true. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> I love it. Oh, that's great. <laughs> okay, I think I got them all. Okay. 
<laughs> Great. <laughs> All right, he added a little red there to that part of him. Oh, he's fun. He's fun. Hope you guys try this. I'm going to add some orange up in here. Orange can be a tricky color with red, so that's why I put the, the or tricky color with blue, because it can turn it brown, so putting that red down first kind of helps, helps that go on. It's not going to react with that blue. Underneath, put little highlights on the eyes there. Let's put a little bit around the bottom. I'm gonna go all the way around. All right. Looking good. Let's keep going. So let's. Grab some more of that purple. I'm going to darken up this area right here and this part of the eyeball. Sorry, I'm thinking. <laughs> Got quiet. That's okay. <laughs> I just zoomed in a little bit just so they can see some of the detail. Okay, and the great. And stuff. Good deal. Thank you, hon. They also have a beak. They do I underneath, hear, yeah. I hear you don't want to get near it. You know, no. Snap your finger off. It looks like a peak, uh, like a like a parrot beak, right? Yep. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah, that definitely didn't want to, don't want to get near that. I think they're fairly friendly, though. I, I don't think that they're very aggressive. I think they pretty much just run. They don't attack people. Mm -hmm. Unless, unless, you know, you're messing with them, maybe. I don't know. I saw one once in Mexico when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. Tide pool. I think I was with, well, were you? I think I, we saw one when we were down there together. Yeah, that must have been when it was then. I didn't know you were with me. Yeah, it's the one and only time I've ever seen one in the wild like that. It's pretty cool. Okay. Uh oh, I, <laughs> I erased this guy. Stitched on it too much. Got the disco lights. Okay. Okay, here we go. Got them out of sequence, <laughs> but we know what we're doing. This one's from Trisha B. And she wants to know how much money will it take for Mark to eat octopi? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Love this, Angela. Great job. <laughs> Thank you. And I mean, at this rate, somebody suggests you might as well just paint in the disco lights. <laughs> <laughs> True that. That's funny. Have you tried calamari? Isn't that squid? Uh-huh. I've had one piece, I think, maybe. Okay, so. Fried. I wonder if octopus is that much different. I will we say. We shouldn't be talking about eating what we're painting, <clears throat> though. <laughs> well, I will say that there was a, a Chinese buffet in Little Rock, and uh, we went there for a group mm -hmm. thing whatever and they had like little small whole octopus Ew. on the buffet bar yeah no yeah no that was a hard no for me <laughs> <laughs> this super chat's from Cheryl 
And she says, thanks for your lessons, Angela and Mark. Oh, you're very welcome. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for the donation. We appreciate yeah, your this, support. I've been looking forward to painting this guy for a couple of weeks now, ever since I decided to, to do it. I actually bought my membership to, uh, I'm going to switch to a smaller brush here. I bought my subscription to Shutter or yeah, Shutterstock just to buy this guy the rights to use this photo for this guy because I liked him so much and I couldn't find a good photo anywhere else. So I was like, well, and I've I've been happy that I did because I've found lots of other great photos too. We've been, use, been using several of them. Okay, but so he was the start. Oops, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, they wanted to know what brush were you using before this one and now this one. This one is the three quarter, three eighths inch angle, and so I've been doing this one for the bigger parts, and then switch into this number one round for the other parts. This is the the um, quinacridone magenta and purple mixture here with a little tiny bit of white right here, and then this one was purple pretty much the whole way. So. This one was a little bit of the red with the quinacridone magenta. Let's do a leg, some legs in blue, too. My goodness. We'll give you a chance to teach okay. at some point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to mix the ultramarine with the purple here. This is from Denise, our friend Denise, and she says, Hi, Angela. Love this tutorial. Oh. We'll definitely do it. Yay. But guess what? BFF, I'm going to go to the pool now. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> Loads. Thank you. And you too, Mark. <laughs> Hugs and kisses. Smiley face. Nice. All right. Have fun at the pool. Thanks, Denise. Rub it in. <laughs> it's all right. It's awesome. Maybe someday we'll get a pool. That would be nice. So for there, a lot of work. Mm -hmm. I remember yeah. skimming ours a lot as a child. That was my chore. <laughs> <laughs> Ultramarine blue here. And if you thought we were rich, we were not. It was algae most of the time. So that was... <laughs> <laughs> We were not. <laughs> Just about every house had a pool in Palm Springs. <laughs> and all right, let's grab us some white here. Give us a little highlight on this guy right here. Well, actually, let's grab this color. This is that light ultramarine. Just lay that in there. Highlight that part while it's wet. The same thing right there. Okay, I just put the paint color right on the tip there pretty much. And that way it gives you a little bit more control over where it's going and it will blend out into your wet paint. Um, let's do some right here. And then let's put some in here. Let's grab some thalo blue. Mix some white with that. Grab some of my ultramarine. Just making a light blue here. You have to make it a little bit darker. So 
And I'm gonna, can I add some of this blue to some of these other areas? Just a little hint of that color here and there. I'm just gonna wanna blend it out, but really you can kinda just tap it in because um, you know, he's got so many colors going on and so much texture in here. You, can, you don't have to have it super smooth. You just kind of want a good transition between the the two colors. So if you get a little bit too much, you can just kind of tap over with the color underneath to blend it in. Let's grab some of the lighter color here, and I'm going to put a little brighter highlight on the edge of him right here. Wipe my brush off and just kind of blend that in a little bit lightly. So I put my bright color right where I want it darkest and then wipe my brush off and then while that paint's still wet I just blended it out a little bit. And I'm going to grab some of that purple that was right here. Wipe my brush off and pull down to just blend over that edge a little bit. All right, let's keep going over here. Let's grab some more of that. Quinacridone magenta and cadmium red. Just spray my colors. Keep them moist. Mark's just real quiet over there. Well, I know when I go to talk, you, you'll start talking about something by name. Sorry. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> well, what are you doing teaching? Well, I'm trying to just talk. <laughs> you should be sorry. Jeez. <laughs> if you're new to Angela's channel, welcome. Glad that you found us. You can subscribe to the channel and then uh, down below, uh, you can click the more below this video and it has a list of all of the supplies all the paints and brushes and stuff that she's using and also links to uh, the brush guys if you need to buy some brushes and five percent off with uh, the code angela fine art yes also there's a link to her amazon uh, store and it also has a whole bunch of painting stuff in there too and then links to social media facebook group and patreon instagram pinterest Twitter, all kinds of ways you can stalk her. <laughs> Mark was my original stalker. That's true. Well, I don't know if I, I don't think I was your first friend. What? I don't think I was your first friend on Facebook. No, I'm talking about at work when you oh. looked up my number and the oh, files. That, that's okay. Shh. That might be illegal. <coughs> I didn't do that. <laughs> she was only kidding. Huh? She was only kidding. <laughs> FBI, CIA. I think the statute of limitations is up on that one, hun. I think. <laughs> 1985, I think. I think you're in the clear. I'm pretty sure. Okay, all right. If you're, if you're sure. Got some of that blue here, crossing I'm over. I'm still not admitting anything on YouTube. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it seemed to turn out okay for you, so. It was all right. I'm not going to press card charges. I don't think. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Alright. 
gonna do the purple underneath there. And then this one up here had some of the blue in it, with the purple and the blue, ultramarine. I feel like I, I think they're getting a little skinny. I wanna beef up these arms a little bit, make them a little thicker. Especially where they're touching onto the body there. I think I wanna make them a little bit wider. So this is going to go like behind, so I'm just going to kind of mentally try to figure out where that's going to be. Go a little bit wider. Grab some purple here. Go a little thicker right there too. This one's gonna curve all the way down like this. Let's put some dark underneath here. Okay, I need to switch to my smaller brush now. a little red for the tip of this guy. There we go. Okay. Looks good. Huh? Okay. Alright, so now I'm going to take my damp cloth here very lightly dab off my chalk marks make sure my paint underneath is dry so I don't wipe that off most of this on this side is already dry do this very lightly because even though that the paint is dry underneath it's still not cured completely it'll take uh, about 24 hours for this initial color to completely cure so you don't ever want to rub really hard on your canvas. You can take all the paint off if you do. Mm, 
Okay, need to leave that alone. It's still too wet. Alright. Let's take that off. See that lifted right there? So I'm going to touch it up. It's a little bit of my cobalt teal. Just touch that in. I think that's where I erased my chalk lines so it got disturbed. Okay, we're done. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking good. I want to, before I go too much further, I'm going to grab my ultramarine blue and my large filbert here, number eight filbert. And I'm going to go up here and darken up my corners and I can go right over the top of this octopus. It's not going to bother anything. I've wet down this paint so it's a little bit watery. You could use your sponge to do this too. In fact, I might just use my sponge to dab off my edges so that there's no like hard line on there. I want it darker around the outside edges of my octopus. It'll kind of just pull the focus in on him a little bit. careful over here because this is still wet. Are we still zoomed in or did you go back out? No, we're zoomed out. Okay. All right, there we go. Now he's got a little bit more of a focus in on him. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. But I felt like he was a little bit light, that background. My my arm, my hands are Your hands completely, are. <laughs> completely shot. <laughs> I didn't try to wash them. They've been inked. They have been inked. <laughs> Probably ought to wear gloves for that part. Especially on your feet. <laughs> Stop. Silly, silly. up that with a little bit of water just picking up that red that got lifted all right so now what let's do some of our brighter colors now I'm gonna mix some cadmium orange and yellow oxide together here I'm gonna use that to highlight the top of the eye a little bit. Right there. Super chat from our uh, viewer Sin. No uh, message so I think she just thought it was too quiet. <laughs> so we needed some more disco lights and cowbell. Got it. Thank you, Sin. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. We appreciate the support. That's awesome. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go right on the inside of that and do a circle with the cadmium red light uh, and ultramar or uh, and the quinacridone magenta. Sorry, I can't say it. I can't use my words. Quinacridone. 
Quackwardone. Quackwardone. Yeah, and then I need a little bit more purple because I got that a little bit bigger than I wanted it to be. There we go. Go back in with my purple there. And then I want to go on the inside of that with a little bit of that light quinacridone with white. There we go. Maybe put a little bit of this orangey yellow. here on the top. And then I'm going to grab some more of that purple and the pupil is a slit. It's just a sideways slit. A little wider on the outside edges. kind of turned him too so we could see the whole eye. I wanted to see the whole eye so that's why he's looking at us. I'm gonna get a little bit of purple and shadow the back side of that eyeball there. Aquanacridone magenta and just kind of dab off a little bit of white. Dab off the bottom edge there. So it's not like a solid circle. There we go. Put a little bit of it over here. And then let's highlight this part a little bit a little bit of white here so this is kind of a pink with the quinacridone magenta there I think I want to switch to my number f a quarter inch angle for this now. So for some of this detail stuff. This is the yellow oxide with the orange. I'm just going to dab over the top. As I get down to the, so I put my brightest color in the center where I want it brightest. And then as the colors kind of disappears from my brush, then I can kind of move it off so that I'm getting softer little dabs in other areas. And then I'm going to grab my next brightest color, some of the cadmium red light, and go along the outside edges of that. Some dabs. Out here, and then let's grab some of that cadmium red and quinacridone magenta. And then we'll add it. As well, and I'm kind of going over the top so that they're Kind of all blending together a little bit. Don't get too caught up in any one particular dot. Just kind of keep going quickly, moving back and forth. Just try not to repeat your patterns too much. That's the thing that you want to avoid, but okay, I like that. He looks kind of cool. Let's give him a little shadow over here on this side so we can get some more of that quinacridone magenta. And shadow a little bit right here. There we 
we go. And let's do the same thing down here. Let's start pulling some of these colors down in here on his arms. Just dabbing. And if I kind of turn my, I can get different, different uh, dots, shapes, by the way I'm holding my brush. So if I want a straight circle, circular dot, I can kind of do like that. Straight down, tip, straight down, and lift. If I want more of a rectangular like I was doing here, I'm kind of setting it at an angle with the tip still slightly down and pulling. So I'm getting kind of a triangular dot. And then if I want more of a flat square, I can set it down on its edge and pull. So I can get all kinds of different, and I'm turning it so that as I'm painting, I'm getting all these different sides of the brush touching, and that way I'm getting kind of different size dots, and it's creating that kind of mottled effect on his skin. Let's grab some of the burnt sienna, because it's not going to be all bright. Put some of that in a couple places. Let's do some more kind of blues on these legs here. So I'm going to start grabbing some of the turquoise and thalo blue. And some of that background color too. I'm going to dab some of that over on this guy's here. So I probably want to transition this between these two colors with some purple, between the reds and the blues. So I'm going to do some purple through here. And then start grabbing these blues here. more super chat just Ooh. when you thought it was safe to go back in the water <laughs> <laughs> this one's from susan and susan l and she says thank you angela oh you're welcome susan glad you're liking this he's he's fun well, i guess i'm not here <laughs> It's hard to turn on disco lights and ring a cowbell. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> no, I can't turn them off. <laughs> a little bit of that purple there on the bottom of his uh, thing there. Yeah. You're a mess. Let's do green. Yeah, I know. So I still have that blue in my brush. I'm just going to grab some green and do some green on this guy here. There you go. So I don't want to get too close to the background color, so I'm trying to decide how to do those blues. I might not be able to do much blue on there. I might have to stick to the purples. I'm not liking the blues very much. They're just kind of disappearing into the background. His arms are not going to be as, be as dramatic enough as I want them to be, so we'll just do purple. 
So sorry if you're painting along. Scratch all of that blue that we just did. Just don't do that part. <laughs> sorry. My bad. <laughs> it happens. I haven't practiced this guy, so I don't get to practice these anymore. I'm trying to save the the arm tendonitis and all. Good excuse, right? Works for me. <laughs> it's actually been a lot better, so I've been very encouraged. Hopefully I'm over the worst of it. Get some more of the purple here. So let's just do the reds and oranges. There's some more of that cadmium orange, cadmium red light, a little bit of the yellow oxide here. I'm just going to go ahead and highlight this, guys. Leg there. Let's figure out where we're putting these tentacles. Let's start doing that. I think I want to do them in kind of a pink color. So I'm going to use the white and quinacridone magenta. I have a little bit of that orangey color in my brush too. Quinacridone magenta here. And I'm going to dot with a straight down like we did before where I want the tentacles to go or the suckers. Suction, suction cups. Suction cups. It may not show up that great on some of these, but then I'm going to grab the lighter color, put them in the middle of those areas. ones are coming down around this side. Like that. <coughs> Excuse me. Lose my voice. And then I'm just going to use the edge of the brush to dot a few little like they're going in there. Cute. Alright, let's do some just kind of peeking out the sides over here too. A little bit of quinacridone magenta and, and then a little bit of the lighter color. There we go. <coughs> can they say that it, can they see that okay? What, what what I'm doing? Let's do it over here. I think so. You think so? Okay. Trying as I'm getting farther down, I'm trying to press down a little bit less on the brush so that I'm getting smaller dots. And we don't have to go on the inside, you can kind of go on the outside of the lines that we did. color. Okay, there we go. 
He looks like an octopus now. He's starting to show his little. So these can go underneath. Let's say they're showing up underneath this side. Over here, maybe. Kind of curving back around. Underneath this way. Got a question asking mm -hmm. if they could use a cotton swab to do the suction cups. Probably, but you, but you'd it'd be harder to get them to go smaller. Is all. You know that that would be the only the hard part is when they get smaller. You'd have to, um, you know, use a tear off part of the Q-tip probably to get these little smaller ones in there but yeah I think so they're they're not quite I'm not doing them perfectly circular I'm doing them a little bit uh, well they probably should be perfectly circular I'm not I'm not doing them that way but from the side you're seeing like lines so they're not perfectly circular when you're seeing them from the side so the ones that are I'm doing perfectly round are the ones that are facing me straight on and then the rest of them I'm doing kind of more oval shaped so I've got this color here I think I'm gonna highlight the top of this guy here a little bit the leg there. Let's do a little bit underneath here. Let's do a little bit over here. I'm just kind of doing what we did over here. Just kind of modeling the leg. Giving a little texture. I'm going to grab a little bit of orange. some of that on here under these legs. So this is the quinacridone. It's got a little bit of white in it for these 
these uh, suckers that we're doing. So let's do them right here. Starting to come along here, seeing the side of them. And then ones you can see both sides so we're gonna go ahead and start in here real close and then go out and over the edge right there They're, they're right next to each other. They're kind of parallel, it looks like, so. And then we're gonna grab the lighter color. And dot on the inside. these electric kind of colors that we're doing on there. Kind of fun. Let's put a little bit of this bright pink on this guy's leg here. Coming up. Grab some of that darker quinacridone. Blend in next to it. So, according to the interweb, mm -hmm. that the eight arms could be covered up to two with two thousand two hundred and forty suction cups. Wow! So you got a few more to paint there, girl. I see that. I'm yeah, I'm falling down on the job here. Looks like you're about two thousand two hundred short. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. Wow, that's a lot. That's crazy. And that's how they taste and smell also. Really? Uh, well, according to the interweb, mm -hmm. the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Okay, well, they probably know what they're talking so about, they, I would guess. I mean, they're making up stuff. I mean, if your kids are just reading this, they don't know any better. I want to know how they found out that they can taste. Like, what octopus did they interview to find out, you know, what they're, what they were tasting, how? That's what I want to know. Hmm, that's shrimp. Yep. <laughs> oh no, that's that's crab. Right. <laughs> what kind of blind taste this were they doing? Exactly. <laughs> Something spicy. Doing the chicken wing challenge. <laughs> 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 
We're so weird. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this is where our brains go, guys, when, <laughs> when left to their own devices. <laughs> A sad peek into our reality. Exactly. <laughs> Welcome to our world. Are you going to put pink glasses on them? No. To be like with a bear in the... No, no, no. that would be fun. Just yeah. give him a monocle. <laughs> somebody said... Su- looks like he's got a monocle. Somebody got some suggested hair. googly eyes. Googly eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't want him to look like he's, like, dotted too much, so I'm going to... Some places I want to smooth it out a little bit, maybe. Go over the top with some longer stripey lines. Oops, I was off camera there. I'm just playing here, trying to figure out the colors. Just messing with it, seeing what I want to do with the colors. Get some highlight. I'm kind of putting my highlights in with colors instead of, you know, instead of adding black and white, we're doing colors on this. So for the lighter areas, we're using yellows. And for the darker areas, we're using the purple because they're naturally dark and light, you know, so we can kind of we don't have to always add white or black to get a change in color or change in value, I should say. I'm going to use some red here. So Rachel, I believe that she's a marine biologist. Oh, truly. Nice. She got all serious on us. So Nice. She's stri- setting us straight. Exactly. Good. Thank you, Rachel. So Keep appara- them in line. Apparently the facts are that they found taste buds under a microscope Ooh. In, in a dissection. And in conducting experiments, they gave them choices and they made clear, had clear preferences for one food over another. That's really cool. So they like the McDonald's fish sandwich over Taco Bell. <laughs> Don't mess with Rachel. She's going to take you down there. She, she didn't say which kind of food, so that's what my assumptions I'm just are. saying, Rachel, keep him in line. Flea of fish. <laughs> Over Taco Supreme. <laughs> All right, here. This is fun. We're just going to put in some little extra details here. I'm just trying to get my colors just right. Oh, I like him. He's so, so cool. Okay, sorry. I'm getting to that good part where it's like starting to look, look good. I'm getting excited now. The chair is bouncing. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Mark can... This is, mm, this is true, yes. <laughs> the left hand goes under the thigh and then <laughs> <laughs> bouncing. <laughs> yes, bounce, yes, yes. <laughs> so, it's working. Let's brighten this up here. Stop, it's so fun. Okay. We will. We'll, we'll get we'll get them finished. Just put a little bit of highlights there. Let me think where we want the tentacles on this guy. So we want to think of one of them coming up from the back underside here. We're suckers, sorry. What are you laughing at now? I don't know if I can read it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I 
because McDonald's may be a sponsor of ours in the future. So oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to miss this McDonald's. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Shout okay. out. Give us a call if you want to sponsor. <laughs> These going off the side. These are not perfect dots, by the way, so you can see that I'm not trying for exact. This is just, I kind of feel like the more, you know, not messy, but, you know, the more kind of like loose that you paint it, the more um, effective it is for me. I, I really like that look of kind of that painterly quality. So I don't, I, I really tried as I've progressed in my art <laughs> journey. To just kind of accept the little variations that happen when you're painting this kind of thing but you know let it kind of uh, progress of course you know when you're when you're learning to paint you do want to develop your skills so you can control your brush but and then you <laughs> and then you kind of get to the point where you kind of want to let your brush a little looser you know so um, this is one where you know I'm just trying not to not to overthink every little dot you know just trying to kind of get them in there where I think they should go and let it happen it doesn't have to be exactly perfect Some lighter color here now. And dotting just a little bit smaller on the inside of these. There we go. I really like that hot pink. It's really making them kind of pop. These ones down here are more pink. These ones up here that we first did are kind of more orangey that go with this more orangey red and these down here are more pink on these blue or purple purple ones I think it's really working well doing it that way use a little bit of the purple and pink here purple and magenta maybe a tiny bit of white I'm going to use it on this leg here just to kind of add some texture. on this one are going to be down below here. So we're just seeing a little bit of them and then as it comes and flips up it's going to flip up right here I think. We 
you're seeing a little bit of them right there. hairs they're sticking to the table can you get your lint brush over there yeah I do <laughs> seriously so we've had some questions so uh, the brushes there mm -hmm. there's a link down below you can do the show more and uh, there's a link to the brush guys and there's Angela has a list on there with mm -hmm. all these brushes and another one that she recommends and yes. you buy through them and then with the code Angela Fine Art you save five percent off your order and people in the Facebook group you know post pictures of them getting their brushes in and they've got them with within two days sometimes yeah so they're they very really quick they're very reactive they're fast fast a smaller company their home you know just a couple of literally a couple of brothers you know home-owned business really good uh, they've been great to work with we've been with them for over a year now I think and really their prices are good their quality you know their customer service is great so I definitely recommend them I've used them too to order some things myself so attention to this leg here give it some color and I think we'll be just about done with this guy grab that light ultramarine blue here magenta do a little bit of that Are we staying on camera there okay yep people in chat are expressing their love for this pink thing oh good good I love it too it's really fun it's super Super fun to paint. Let's get some orange here. Maybe we'll do some oranges up in his arm right here. There we go. Okay. Maybe a little bit over here. We want the warmer colors on the areas where we want it to look like it's raised up. So, you know, where the light's hitting it, maybe a little bit on this guy where the leg is starting to lift up. Arm, sorry. Let's put a little bit on the, on the top of this. Right there, a little bit right here where it curves around. Right now, I'm going to grab my yellow. This will be the just a few, and it's mixing with all these reds that I've got in my brush. So it's not 
bright, bright yellow. It's just kind of a toned down version. I'm gonna put it in just a few little spots. I might grab a little bit of white just to brighten it up just that much more. just a little bit here and there so I'm gonna pick a few spots to dry brush a little bit of this color on so what level of difficulty do you think we would be on this because there's some people in chat who are expressing some apprehension of um, this a go. it's the the lining is probably going to be the most difficult part you know getting the legs sort of um, so if you have trouble uh, with that kind of thing, you know, it may be a little bit trickier. Um, I would say middle, it's probably a mid-level um, beginner. So, like, definitely not your first painting. You know, don't, I wouldn't, you know, if you're super early uh, in your painting, um, you know, you may give it a few paintings before trying to tackle this guy. But I I think... I don't know. I'm always the worst person to ask because some of the things that I think are easy or not is easy to other people. So, But I definitely think he's, he's probably... He's got a lot of different techniques that we're doing. You know, we're doing dry brushing. We're doing dots. We're doing, you know... I would Some give other things, so. I would give this one a six and a half to seven out of ten, probably closer to seven out of ten in difficulty. Really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll trust your judgment. You're usually better at, mm -hmm. at uh, picking out those things than I am. Because when it comes down to it. I'm going to do a little white right here. You know, the colors do not have to be exactly what Angela's doing because, right. you know. There's easier ways of doing a little white on the very top of the eyelid there. And then just a little bit on the, like a line underneath too. Mm -hmm. You know, since they, think? well, just since they change color to their environments, you know, you can right. make Right, yeah, you could, if you wanted to you do want. more simple, you could literally do them the first layer that I did. And then do dots and be done. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, do your first layer of paints on there. Do some purples and pinks, uh, you know, for the different legs. And then do some dots and be done. Like, you don't have to do him as complicated as I've done here. You know, you could definitely simplify him quite a lot. And, uh, yeah. So, but I think I'm going to call him good. I, I like him, I think. Pretty happy with it. What do you think? You see anything that I missed? Um, no. no. So you just did it on a straight blue ocean. You didn't put any of the rocks or anything like that. No, That's in the background. no. I just wanted them to kind of blue. Okay. But, people, but I did the kind of halo effect with the darker blue around. Mm -hmm. People around can him. do that mm -hmm. if they want to. Yeah, but you could do make them on it a solid own. background if you wanted to. You don't have to do anything fancy with it. So, but. Uh, let me sign it and we'll call it good. Grab my pigma pen here. I'm going to sign right along his leg here. There we go. So we've got a general question. Okay. Do you think that sketching and drawing will help you become a better painter? Yes, I do. I think that... Uh, that you can paint without knowing how to draw just fine. Like you can use traceables and paint and become proficient at painting. Drawing is a totally different skill. But what drawing does is help you see things differently. And by seeing things more accurately, you'll be able to paint them more accurately and get the colors more correct and uh, that kind of thing. So that's what it does help with. You know, I think 
uh, I'm seeing something here I'm going to mess with. Um, that that would be my main thing, you know. I, I definitely think that they're t you know they're two different things, and I've you know I tell people all the time you don't you don't have to know how to draw to to paint, but um, it helps. It does help. It really does. It'll help you. It mainly will help you see the the things that you need to do to change, you know. Um, so when you get your painting to a certain point, and you uh, you think it's done, uh, but there's something just a little bit off with it maybe, or you think, you know, this just doesn't seem quite right, but you're not exactly sure what it is. Uh, a lot of times you'll be able to see the, the things that you need to change better if you've, if you've learned to draw, cause it, it helps you to see more accurately. I don't know. It's not, drawing has, is, has less to do with your actual manual dexterity than seeing it it helps you see the you know practice with your with the with the hand most of us have pretty decent control of our hands uh, already with a pencil because we've grown up using you know pencils um, to draw to write and things with so um, it, it has to do with seeing things accurately so all right guys Thanks so much. Hope you've enjoyed it. We've really enjoyed bringing it to you. This has been a super fun one. I've, I've really liked him. Uh, if you haven't been able to tell already, <laughs> so he's been really fun to paint for you. Uh, so we'll be back on Tuesday night with another, our last of our Songbird series. We're going to do a Blue Jay. They, we had some voting in comments, so they uh, look like most of them said Blue Jay. So we're going to do Blue Jay. And then uh, next week we'll be back with a ocean, uh, scenic ocean doorway with some flowers and things. So it should be fun. All right. We'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Thanks.